Hello everybody and thanks for tuning in. It is David Herman, alias Daz the Artist, in Olympia, Washington at 3.37 in the afternoon on September 28th, 2020. This is an illustration I've begun. It doesn't really have a name, so right now it's just called Who is the Head? But uh, this was done in a pretty complex way, I've done this in Affinity Designer, just so you can see all the layers. Basically what I did is I started out with a red background. Then I did some uh, pencil sketch lines. You can see them even underneath, like as a texture to the illustration. Then from that I went to uh, pen lines and did one half. Then from that I flipped it, saved it, and brought it into here. And then from here, I um, did the shading. I flipped shading into the other half, and then I went asymmetrical shading and did whatever I'm going to do and got it to this point. And after staring this overnight, now I've decided to make a hot air balloon from it. So that's going to be kind of cool, I hope, and that's why I thought I'd film this. Uh, let's see what happens. So... First things first, I'm going to put a new layer on there. You can see I have right half of the face, left half of face, ears, shading of ears, and so on. This, just like when I click that layer, it shows you it's a box that's a partial area. So um, let's go into the pencil. And um, we'll do some sketching on a separate layer. So I can erase it if I don't like it as I dream up the hot air balloon. Now this pencil stuff down here at the bottom, unfortunately when I did the pencil, I um, actually put it on the color layer. And I'm afraid if you go into eraser for something like that, we'll just make a test, it takes out the color also. Which is why I have separate layers, but let's just see. Yeah, I see what happens there. So that's why we're not gonna mess with that. Okay, and then we'll go back up to the top, and uh, I'm not too worried about this. I could cut it right off if I wanted and add another red block. It's, it's all easy, but I like working with stuff, so let's do a new layer. And just to make sure I'm, let's see, if I look in these little boxes down the side, it's pretty hard to tell what's up. If I turn that off on, okay, well, we're in here, so I'm going to call this uh, gondola, just for, for now. So I know where I'm at. If there's layers in between that aren't working, I'll check that out later when I'm not on camera. Okay, so let's treat this like a hot air balloon. It's coming uh, at you, or it's going sideways, or whatever. Let's make something interesting. So... First things first, I will go into my brushes. I will select a pencil type brush. So these are basics. If you go into pencils, pens, things like that, you can get other brushes. Let's go to pencils. And if you hold your mouse over, it tells you this is like a natural pencil H. Most people don't know you can hover over these. Natural B, 2, 2B, HB. So whatever you like, someone has tried to uh, do that. And if you touch them, you can modify all that stuff I'm just showing you because Affinity is really just an awesome program. There's a mechanical pencil. So let's try a mechanical pencil. I kind of like mechanical pencils. If you wanted to go over mechanical pencil, double click, you can bring it up here. See, so this is, shows your spacing, your flow, your shape, rotation, none, the size. And uh, so say I wanted to change the size. You see how it's changing above me? There you go. So this is another factor. I'm just throwing it in because people sometimes watch these as instructional videos. All right, so there's a circle, but it's in white. So we're going to edit that out and go check our color. Color does things on its own if you're not watching it. <laughs> so let's go into color, get a black. Let's actually get my rich purple black. And uh, 
let's go back to the top, make sure we're on gondola, and start again with the sketch. Okay, so there we go. And I don't care if it's symmetrical right now. I don't. In fact, it would not be. And we're going to blow that area up just a little bit so we can see where we're working. Um, I guess you can play around with this. This is on a... Uh, if it's the first time you ever watched it, I work on a 24-inch Wacom Cintiq Pro monitor. Everyone has different monitors, different types. Nobody sponsors me for a darn thing. Everything I do is uh, comes out of my own pocket and my own time and my own energy and my own labor and everything. So, uh, why I would love to have sponsorship or someone buying me products like a 30 two inch Cintiq, the biggest one they make, I would love that to do some demonstrations on with live models perhaps. So I could try that. 32 inch, you, your working space is probably going to be about a good 28 by something, so that's that's a good, that's a canvas size there. I could do life drawing on it or still lifes or something. Right the size almost. <laughs> so there was, I'm thinking of my uh, Gondola, and I want it to be something cool, sci-fi looking, of course. So right now, there's a bucket. But it's going to, because this is a sci-fi thing, that could even have a canopy of glass, protect from the elements of the planet <laughs> we're gondoling, gondolaing around in. And this is just a sketch. Remember, it's on a layer, right? You turn this off should be nothing like that boom which is why I work in layers gives you the greatest flexibility and again the term that's been coined for all of that is non-destructive meaning that you can go back and work on any item you want I could literally change the entire illustration under direction if someone wanted me to modify my colors above or uh, change the shape of the lines or, you know, close one eye, open one eye, do whatever you want. Uh, because every single line is on a, is on a different uh, layer. Okay, so now we're kind of getting a lip around this going. You can watch me. I never edit these. I do turn them off and on if I've got to run to the bathroom or get a cup of coffee or answer the phone or check the mail. But... They're never edited. In other words, I, I don't speed anything up or, or chop anything out. What you see is what you get. If I make an error in front of the audience, I'll correct it in front of the audience. Because we both learn then and there how to solve the problem. And that also it gives you the confidence to solve problems and not start from scratch. Because starting from scratch every time, that's just a waste of your time, to be honest. You don't want to do that. You want to be able to... Um, just resolve it, even if it took you 20 minutes. Just figure it out because, one, you're less likely to do it again, and two, when you do do it again, you'll know the answer. Makes you more familiar with your tools. There's infinite tools and in all these programs that uh, people have not put together in certain combinations. Uh, you know, and that's one of the things I love to do is just figure out ways to combine stuff out of the box. Okay, so there's kind of like a canopy bubble and you can see through it and it's got these strings which I might even attach. Now, the shape of my gondola. So, it depends how big I want it and what I want on it. So, uh, I'll give that a thought for a second. I'm going to put like another bubble kind of here. And you can do perfect shapes and all that. Uh, you know, using the preconceived uh, tools for that, for all the geometrics. But, um, I kind of, uh, I got things, sometimes I use the perfect tools and sometimes I don't. Depends what I'm doing. It's always good to use your hand. So, like, if you wanted that to be symmetrical, you could divide this and flip it. But, uh, I'm just gonna kind of let it happen naturally. It's going to come around here, but it's going to be smaller. Because there's something cool about asymmetry, too. And I'm just 
making a bunch of circles. That's how I help develop a proper ellipse or circle. I can see where I'm off, correct, and so on. And then I can go in and erase. So since we're on a completely different layer, you can go in and uh, erase. I'm showing you. If you if you want to go tight, you can. If you want to go loose, you keep that fuzzy edge. Uh, for now, in your sketch, you can take some things out so you can kind of get your mind in, into the game, what you got going, what you're thinking about, lighten it up a little. You know, like you're using your gum eraser on there. But just think about it painting the same way you would in a, or drawing whichever your phase you're in of your artwork uh, as you would in the real world. So if you use a pencil and eraser, design a pencil, find the eraser, and draw. It's that simple. If you're going to paint with acrylics, pick out the acrylic brushes, pick out your colors, and paint. And use the techniques that you use in the real world. And you will find your artwork has a very unique quality to it, like mine. Now, you may not like my style, but no matter what I paint, you will know it's me. Good, bad, or indifferent, as I always say. All right, so now we got this kind of going for the gondola. And scale, you can always figure out yourself. If your entities are going to be uh, life size and you want them on the outside or the inside or whatever, figure that out. Okay, I like keeping the shape I'm gonna go with this flow here down to this this is so this could become a light you see and um, this can become another proje projecting light or something like that and then uh, I might have the bottom asymmetrical like this and again this all comes from art school and stuff drafting I had uh, you know as a young, young man, when I went to high school, I took drafting and art major in high school. And then, oh, my two-year degree in college is uh, liberal arts with a focus on the figure, plain arts, uh, liberal arts, but figurative art. And then the printing profession I was also in, I was a journeyman in that, did that, and you know, tattooing, and now digital art. So it's a mixed bag, and it builds up over time. Again, you can turn this off, and you can turn it on. If you want it behind other things, you know, you just slip it in between the layers. By that, I mean you can move your layer just like that, you know, see? Okay, but we want it right there. Little tricks of Affinity Designer. Now, how do I get that pen look? I'm going to show you. What we're going to do is we're going to put another layer over that. And we're going to put gondola pen. It doesn't matter what I call them, as long as I know roughly where I'm at in that stack of layers. Because you can turn them off and on always and find out where you are. And now to do pens, you go into... Um, Designer Persona at the far left up there. Those three icons. You have Designer Persona, you have Pixel Persona, and you have Export. Designer Persona, you pick the pen, and then you pick Pressure. Or, uh, you do that with Pencil, pick the Pressure, but I don't think you have to do that with Pen. Let me see. Uh, stroke. I'm going to set a width for Stroke. Don't need that pen. There we go. So I'm going to go like so. Maybe one for now. Okay. And then I'm gonna, when I draw a line, you edit, undo that, like this. Watch. I can go. You see these things, the handles and the line? That's one way to do them with a pen or you know it's the same way you would do an illustrator or something like that let me undo this for a second you can um, use your pencil and you go to pressure where it says controller hit the drop down menu and hit pressure then 
uh, we're at one point, so we draw a line. Okay, we'll enlarge this. You can see that line now, how jagged it is. So we're going to edit undo. We're going to make that bigger. So I'm going to go pencil. Width. Let's go up to about um, four. Right in that area. Okay, 4.2, sorry. And we'll draw another line. Okay, you can see that, right? And if I wanted to connect, I can um, go to hmm, nodes, and I can move the point till it touches the other point, and then you get the yellow line. So this is now connected. And if I want to round it out or lift it out, you grab the handle C and then you can start playing with your handles. So you just got to be careful. There we go. Beautiful. And you can round everything out. Just so when you use handles, You can see move stuff around. The length of your handle determines the length of the line between two points. Like if you want it bigger, so you pull it that way, or you can just guide it in however you want. And when you rotate it, that moves the line. So you can set your size of your line, rotation, and keep playing with those till you get the curve that you're happy with. Trying to sort these out. And then work my handles. There we go. Now, to change the shape of that uh, pencil line, you highlight it, and you can go to um, Strokes. Then where it says Pressure down there, this pressure chart shows the uh, pressure throughout that weird line I just drew. Now, if I want to correct that into a nice uniform kind of a curve, I can grab these points. And uh, the higher a point is, the thicker the line is. The lower the point, the thinner the line is. And we're trying to fix this graph. Okay, so now it goes thin, thick, back to a thin in a semicircle. And you know, let me pull the width so you can see. See how that is if I exaggerate it? It's like an Ouroboros, a snake swallowing its tail. Kind of like that. And then you can rotate it or whatever you want to do. You can move it like this. See if you had to move it off so you could study it and put it back. You can do that. And then you get it right where you want it, like so. And if you want to clean it up even more, then you go to your nodes, which is you got your arrow. It brings them both up. You want the node tool. And then you want to hit a point and take the handles and adjust. 
So if you see something that's weird, you got to get your points all sorted out. And that happens a lot uh, when you draw. So I kind of get that. It's kind of jumping around, so I must have a uh, snap on. Let's see, force pixel alignment. I don't want to do that. And I don't want to snap to grid. Okay. So that should that should be better. There we go. A lot of times I do snap to the grid and I'm very particular about my work. But uh, in this case, you know, you need to sort some of these things out. And the more you work in the, the software, the more you come acclimated to it. And if you feel you have too many points, you can get rid of a point. You can go over to uh, Point Transformation Tool. You can, you can do things like this, which is pretty cool. You can have your alignments checked. You know, you can play with all kinds of things. <laughs> These programs are amazing things. So get used to your program. And enjoy Affinity uh, Designer. Okay, let's get back into the node tool for a minute. I just want to okay, see. So it's still snapping to something. So I have one more. Th I have to find out what I have snap on for. Snap to margin. Snap to objects. I want uh, snapping completely off. And. Um, Right there where it says enable snapping, turn that off. And then we can move these around better, see? So that was, um, there's a lesson in snapping and how to do that too. You know? So now back to our line. Let's, uh, let's get this more uniform. Here's my handles, dial them in. Kind of just, yeah, checking it out. Now, if you hit your pressure bar, you can change this and exaggerate it even more. The higher you go with a point, the thicker the line gets. Uh, where that point falls in the curve of the line, if you read me. So, uh, a nice high points high up means that in the middle of the lines getting thicker and at the ends it gets to points see and if you want it to be a certain way you can manipulate that you can rotate it you know like like uh, you hit your arrow key you can do this and then you can rotate that let me uh, show you just grab this and you can rotate that see So we want it at zero degrees, straight up and down. And if you forget, you just hit Edit, Undo, Transform. And there it is. Okay. So that's our first line. Now, we're going to go do another line. So we go back to Pencil. And if I want to save that, I hit Save Profile. Now you see that arc is down there. That will allow you to apply that to your next line. For instance, we are going to go Pencil and then we're going to draw one here. See that? And then if I go to pressure and I hit this, boom, it's applied those metrics to this line. And then there's things I'm drawing off of it. So edit, undo, edit, undo. And then um, go into my node mode. And I can sort out these mo nodes. See where they're at. See how I join those? Because now we're not snapping to anything. We will snap when we're, say you're, you know, you're lining up text, you're lining up vertical rules, you're, you are want something centered on the page and all that. That's when you enable snapping. 
It's a very powerful tool. I love snapping. Okay, so there's a second line for now. And then you can draw another line. So you can come here and you go all the way up. You can go back to pencil. There we go. And draw the bubble. So see the canopy is now, I'm freehanding that in, right up to the point. Put these two together. Uh, edit that last one out. you got to be on the node tool to move them. See the red box? You want to join this till it turns yellow. And that's there. And this one is right. Very invasive. Now I'm guiding the shape. There's lots of ways to do lots of things. Whatever you're familiar with, you know, be my guest. Do it best for you. I just want to show you the options that I have. And I'm guiding the bubble. Lots of options. And if I go to point, I can do this. It tells you where you are. Okay. So uh, looking at this line, I want to smooth that out. No tool, this one, and this one. Okay. I'm going to carefully adjust. the way I want this, just for now, kind of quickly. I don't need all these points, they can be erased later and so on. But that's a good little start, right? Now, if I don't want that odd shape, I can do uh, like a solid line all the way around if I wanted. I could go set this up here, put this up here, and then like that, and like that. We're bringing all these to the top to have a uniform thickness. And sometimes my pen isn't grabbing. It's supposed to turn blue when you get it like that with a little X in it, a little cross here. Okay, there we go. Starting to work again. Nope. It's playing a game. There we go. So now you can save that profile. I did it twice. And that gives you the same thickness all the way around, see? And then you can adjust all those little things if you want. It's uniform. And to show you that, we can change the thickness, see? And there you have that. So right now I'm going to make it about like so for my illustration. I want it just a touch ragged like that. This is a changing shapes in a different uh, dimension. So, we have shapes, shapes, 
shapes, so on. Let's, uh, let's put this one over here. Okay. Now, I'm going to draw the outside border. I'm going to go back to my pencil. And draw it. Okay. Now, if I wanted that to be thick in the middle and thin at the edges, I can hit the first one. And if you notice, it's thin where it's far away from us. It gets wider as it comes towards you and me, and then it's thin again. All right? So those are some of the ways you can do that. Now, once I have something like that, uh, I might want to sh paint and shade and all that stuff you saw. So I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to add a few more shapes. So this time we're going to, we're going to do the pen just so you can see how that's done. We go to pen, we hit a point, then we go to another point, and at that point you can adjust as you lay them down, see, like so. If you want to uh, manipulate, you can. You want to move that point, you got to go to no, no tool and then drag it away like that. And so, pen, you can play with pen too. See, it's all fun, you will love it. You will love it. Isn't that cool? So now we're going to do another one. We're going to go here. Pen tool. Sorry about that. Here. Here. And I'm adjusting. I'm down here. I'm adjusting. And then here. And I'm adjusting. Now, I hit that in the wrong place, so then you can move it. This is all good. You'll understand this when you work on it. There you go. But I'm just showing you how to fix errors, do things. In the meantime, we're working. I'm getting somewhere, right? So back to pen. And here. Now it seems it's connected, right? So edit, undo. And you want to go up to the top here. New layer, pen, and then a new layer. Every time you hit a point, then you draw out these tools. You tease them out. And uh, they are all can be manipulated. If you forgot where you want to take off a point, you can take them back. Like that, see. You can tease this. You gotta run a pen, yep, and then come over here. And like that. Right. And then a new layer. And I'm gonna do something here. And here. I'll tease that out a little. Tease that out a little. Some weird stuff like that, okay? Tease it. If I don't like it, I don't undo. I can do that. 
and I can play with each one. It's kind of weird. It's kind of fun. Okay. Let's do a save. I'm safe. And let's say I want to do some more of those weird things. So I can go here. I like that. I might even go to here, to here, to here, and to here. Okay. And then if I did that, and I want to play with those, I can go to my arrow key. And that turns on that section. In that section, I can do my nodes. And I can carefully manipulate the nodes. See? So you have lots of options. Uh, depending on if you had a full, made a mistake or you want to manipulate something after, you have an afterthought. You know, however you want to uh, play with those things. It's all up to the person. tools and stuff like that to change the corner shapes to squares or round or whatever you want. All right, now we've got some kind of weirdness going on there. That last line, I'm going to uh, hit the profile like that. And then I'm going to go back to nodes. I'm going to Manipulate that line. I want to grab the shapers like this. Just by grabbing my line, I can do that. See? Can have all kinds of things happening. And that's the fun, is to do that kind of stuff. Because this is, first of all, uh, an alien craft. And second of all, I'm trying to make it look very interesting. And so this is, you can see how I'm now going back to play with all these shapes and create my dark energy field of matter and things that are happening in it. So this is the dark energy uh, playing out kind of its own rhythms and stuff like that. I can go to the big one now. And if I wanted to elongate this, let's say like here, and then curve it out so you can do that. So of course you had to watch all that stuff just to get a feel for it. but. Now that you have a feel, you can kind of see what I'm doing. Because there's lots of stuff that you can do. You've got to, uh, you got to want to mess with it. It's, sometimes it's hard to grab things, but uh, it's all doable. And now this is going up here. And this is really my experimental stage, you know, I kind of I had something going. I want to see where I'm going with it. Uh, a lot of times I do not have, like I say, preconceived notions as to where these things are going. But once I begin my art, then I, I allow myself the freedom to play around, make errors, to change, to not be stuck and rigid in a design, to have, you know, the freedom to to use the power of digital software. And that's another thing you're going to get your mindset into when you get into the digital world, of course. If you're a novice or if you're an um, experienced pro, then you know all these things. But uh, most people aren't showing you how to really get in there and dabble. You know? So you move the line in between and that brings the tool out. This key, I was letting you experience it. So here, like if I grab this side, then I have the tools 
see, to go either way. So you'll figure it out. It's it's quite crazy. <laughs> it is, but it's it's totally a blast. The more you get into these things, the more you do, and you just can't be rushed all the time to uh, get have patience. You gotta allow yourself to experience what's going on. Because you see what we did? Nothing's etched in stone. And we have the freedom to shape things way after we've made them. You know. So you don't have to say to yourself, oh, I gotta redraw all that. Uh, no, you don't. You gotta learn how to use your tools. This is a perfect example where I left things very funky for you. So you can watch me fix them. And this is really tutorial type stuff. There you go. Looking pretty cool. Uh, the shape of the ship, of course, is kind of ragged. I can fix that. You know. Follow this around. Maybe smooth this out. This edge. Kind of. They'll jump just about where they got to be, but then you got to kind of dink around with them. But it's all good. And then if you go uh, to like magnify, you can see what you created. If you want to change something, say you didn't like the end of this, these tips here, you can go to um, select your object and then go to this tool, this corner tool. And then if you go corner types up here let's see you gotta hit the corner and you can hit uh, the corners so if you wanted none you can do that and then they don't have any shapes see now if I wanted to fix this thing here I can come back here I can go to my node tool I can change the shape of this curve just like that and if I want to play with it I can do that and there you go so pretty cool stuff huh now let's do some coloring so we're gonna save this we're gonna look at it back on our full screen so we're gonna go view and we're gonna go zoom to fit and there's our little ship gondola which will be held by strings and look otherworldly. And so now I'm going to do some uh, illustrating. Uh, let's see. Let's magnify this back up. I'm going to put the magnifier right in the center and slide. So I'm sticking with that object. Then I can use the hand and move it up. Or if you're in magnifier, remember you just hold down your space bar. It turns into the hand. You could move it around and still be in magnify when you let go. See? Okay. So to paint, we're going to go from designer persona to the right to pixel persona and then we're going to pick a brush and now I'm going to go into the brushes <sighs> I'm going to do this one kind of pencil-y so let's see what we got you've got here it says grease pencil you know what that is when you pull a string and you pull off the paper and you got that greasy textured pencil it's a layout pencil this is your carpenter's pencil those flat ones you know what kind of that lead's like You've got rough graphite, you've got mechanical B, 6B, 4B, HB, and so on. This is a natural pencil. So we're going to click that, and that should be kind of like your colored pencils. We'll go up to color, and let's say we want to fill in the bubble. So let's just use a, I'll show you another trick. Since I want to use that bubble, I can go to, uh, before I paint, I will go to um, the arrow key. I'll touch my bubble. I will go into fill and I will pick gradient. And I if, take that uh, little slash off, pick gradient, save that, go to the, the white one. You don't want to see that. If you have the slash, 
you select there's no uh, no gradient in there but if you go to the white one on the left now you have a space that you're going to put your gradient into you can color that line too I'm going to show you this so first thing I'm going to do is put a gradient in there and um, I'm going to have it go left to right and it's, so there's your midpoint if you look underneath it's at the center and the opacity is 100 right now and uh, we're going to pick a color so let's go to the right hand side we hit that ball and that's going to be say a light teal for now okay and you, uh, you see how it went all the way across to white that's how you can start and if you want it darker you know you can go like that or like this you can change it to grays whatever you want it to be if you want it to look illuminated inside you can do that you can play tricks or you can have many points as you want so on the white side say I want that to be yellow I can hold down till I get white in the color then I can tap the yellow and now the gradient goes yellow to green and you've seen me make that shape and if I want a lighter yellow I can you know travel around inside my triangle and I can move this midpoint just by holding that bar see to how far I want yellow and how much I want green or so on like that and you can tap and add point and point and point and color so say I wanted a purple in here somewhere like that you see how it's green on one end yellow on the other transitioning to purple and then I can move these points uh, anywhere I want to have as much of that particular color in a particular space isn't that pretty cool that's very cool now your opacity is below that so you can make this not as dark you see how we're seeing the lines in the middle now my texture so we had a transparency to it kind of effect and if I wanted to change that line that's around it I go to my stroke and say I like fuchsia I could pop a fuchsia down there doesn't have to be black, it could be red, it could be blue. It's up to your imagination. This is where the power of digital comes in. If you're airbrushing that and you had to change that, my God, it's such an ordeal. <laughs> I can't imagine and tell you all the steps you got to go through. You know, there's just too many. So, there we go. And that's that. Um, I'm going to go back to black and make sure it's nice and dense black right there. Okay. And I can pick another shape because this is like a plasma gondola and I can manipulate anything I want in there. So I go to my fill, I click fill, I go to the white, turn off the no fill. And now we're in fill. If I want fuchsia, I can put a solid color there. If I want a gradient, I can go here and I can pick different gradients. So say I want elliptical, where it's like a light. You see that? It's bright in the center, and it goes out to the edges from the center. And then you can change that to a different color. So you want it purple, like that. And if you wanted uh, another stage in there, like a hot red or something like that, you could you can make a point, and then you can change the color of that point. And now it goes to an orange to a purple cone. And if you don't like the thickness of each color, then you hit them and slide them. You know, see that? So if you had to airbrush this, and I did traditional airbrushing, analog airbrushing as we would call it, believe me that's a freaking hassle so right now it's pointing out towards the viewer but if I wanted that to look more towards the side I could go like this and instead of uh, elliptical you can try radial you can try conical there you go see how that looks and then you can change all that the way I showed you, but we're going to go with uh, linear radial or elliptical, I'm sorry, like that. 
very, very cool. And to move my midpoint, I would go here and use this slider. And that shows you uh, how it fans out from the midpoint. Let's see, so how big uh, your midpoint. You can't relocate it, which would be totally awesome. Your position here. Again, is another kind of just a, when you're moving that along the band, you're changing the, the transitions between colors and blends and how wide they are and so forth. So you have that option. If you wanted to distort this, you'd have to go into your affinity photo and then you could distort it. All right, so that's pretty cool. So let's save that. And uh, let's pan back. So we'll go view. And I like to make these videos myself every now and then. It just kind of gets me more familiar and re recall all these magical things I do on there. <laughs> now, if I wanted to change the size of the whole gondola, you got to figure out where you started your gondola, okay, which was here, right? And then you would go all the way up to the top. You'd hold down your tab key, hit the button, and now you've got the whole section. See that? And then you can tell it to group that mm, like this. Okay? Now, everything in the gondola group, which we're going to call that gondola group, I can grab with my pen. Now this is totally magic stuff. I hope you're watching. And I can move this whole thing now. Now tell me, if you were had a request by your editor, you wanted it over here, you wanted it over here, your art director, you know, you have the option to use all these tools. There's no way you could move that in an airbrush painting, traditional painting, or anything like that, and be non-destructive to everything else. I mean, it could be on its head. So if I wanted here, I wanted off center like this and another shape over here for balance, I could do that. But in this case, I'm doing it. And if I wanted to snap to the center, that's when you go back to your enable snapping and snap to grid and doom and doom and all that. And then what's cool is you see how it's telling me when it's at the center right there in the middle of his nose I let it go and it, and I'm good you know if it had to be super precise it's super precise you know what I mean? pretty sweet trick so like if you wanted the distance different oh, edit undo edit undo transform I grab the background edit undo edit undo somewhere I grab the background that's bugging me Oh, let's go down to the background, hit that, and see what's up. We just pull this box back up. See, so you can fix that, change the shape of the box. But there we go. We're good there. Somehow I hit that. I didn't notice it. You probably noticed me doing it, but you didn't tell me. Okay, back to this. Now I'm snapping it with the grid. So look at the eyes. When I move this, it's centering it from side to side, center on the page, in the middle of those two eyes. It's hard to let go sometimes. There you go. We have a sip of orange juice. My throat's getting dry. That's a lot of cool stuff you just learned. Now, I'm going to pause and check the mail. I'll be right back. So I go here and I hit and we're back on. I checked out my mail. Turns out I overpaid five bucks on a medical bill, so they sent me back five bucks. How about that? That's a treat. All right, back to our gondola. Let's color it in. I've given you enough of uh, a lesson, I think, uh, in my own way for how to get started on something like this. So now I'm going to work. Um, I 
get into pencil. Well, let's do the other side of that circle. So we're going to go over to arrow, touch, 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 outside touch, inside touch, till we find it. Oh, because it's in a group now, you got to do this. You got to open up your group. And then you got to dink, dink, like this. So you're looking in these little boxes, there's the curve. See those little black boxes to the left of the word curve, which is each line you draw. You'll see an image. You've got to stare real intensely at it. When you're on your monitor, it shows up better because the gray with the black. If I had white or something, it might show up as white. I don't know. All right. So let me uh, do my fill and stuff with this. I'm going to rotate this a little. So those two lines are at the top. I'm going to change the shape of stuff, do a little quick manipulation, and then get into the razzmatazz. So I'm going to go like that. Nodes, node tool. Bring that down. And I kind of want that shape like that. It's totally bizarreness. Uh, Maybe a little more like that. Touch there. Now, I'm going to uh, go into fill and click this. Uh, hang on one second, people. Let me pause this real quick because uh, a couple things going on in the world i got to check. So I'll be right back to you. Once again, we're back. I'm only going to go for another 15 minutes, I think. And then I will save this. Okay, so you see I've dropped a little gray in there. You can tell where the fill is going to be. And if I went over back to the other one just for fun, let's uh, show you something here like that. And I wanted to rotate that. I could rotate it like so any way I want. If I want, you know, shapes being where they may be. You can distort this stuff. Let me just show you. This is how you would get your, you know, elliptical shapes and stuff like that. Or you can pick an elliptical shape. But if you drew something like I did and you want to play with it, you know, you can have this ability to do that, which we're doing. And uh, if you wanted, again, to mess with the line, you can mess with the line, like I showed you. I'm going to square that out just a little bit like that. See, that looks pretty cool. And if I wanted to change the thickness of that or anything, let me get back to just pulling that front one out too. Let me get it. Uh, oh, where are we? We're in the gondola. Yep. So we've got to open that up. When this when this arrow is. Uh, Like that, and like that. It shows you that it's opened or closed. See? Active or non active. Hit that. And then looking for that ellipse, you take your slider. And yeah. It's going to be that, maybe? And that, that, uh, where is that thing at the moment? Touch it right there. Okay. If I wanted to pull that nose and smooth that out like that, I could. And this shape this a little so I'm shape this like that. It's cool. All right. There. 
everything looks pretty cool there. Jelly. Jelly. All right, let's go back to this shape. So we drew that shape. Uh, right there. And where is that shape? So there it is at the bottom. See, we're of, uh, inside. You see everything is pushed to the right. It shows you all those curves and everything. You're, I'm, I have gondola open when you can see all that. Okay, just so you know. Now back to coloring that, I go to fill, and if I want a gradient, uh, now it's going to go from top to bottom because I rotated it, and that's one of the tricks you can do. Um, so if I take like so, uh, yeah, let's go into here, elliptical. Radio, yeah, radio, and then let's go here, and let's pick a shade, some red, and to fuchsia, fuchsia, we're digging that, and we're going to go on the gray side, purple, and it's looking pretty chill, we're going to move this center piece center divider. See, I'm bringing the fuchsia over, exaggerating, coming back and forth so you can see that. So a little bit like that. Kind of nice. And then I might want uh, like an edge. So I'll, I'm going to stick one in between. Watch this. There's a little orange. See that? And there's still fuchsia at the outside edge. And if I slide this, You see that fuchsia pulling into those curves? So now I've got like that glow. And then if I wanted yellow on that very faint edge, I can do that like that. And see how you get that nice warm radiating glow going on in there. So don't underestimate the power of your software. Now back to hand drawing and things like that. Uh, let's do a little bit of art and then I'm going to close this video out uh, just so you can see how, you know, that's just a illustrative video, a little bit of sharing. So we're going to brush, which we intentionally were going to do way back when, but I got so distracted I decided to make us more informative. Uh, I'm going to go up here to brushes and I'm going to say... Nashville Pencil, I'm liking everything there, okay, and my color, let's start with this uh, purple towards fuchsia, and then I'm going to go into Pencil, and I'm going to draw, so let's uh, turn on the Express Key Remote, change the shape of the brush, so that's showing black, it always does this kind of monkey business when I'm not looking. <laughs> Hit it again. And now I'm drawing in the fuchsia. I want to be out of this mode, first of all, so let me close all this. And edit that out. And then put a layer above gondola. Right there. So this is totally can be manipulated. See now if I don't want that to be on top of that, I should be able to erase without erasing the line below. That's one way. Or you can put it all under the gondola. I'm going to show you another trick. We can just kill this layer, grab the layer, and take that to your trash like that. If I want it under my all the art of the gondola, right? I'll put a layer here, like that, and then I'll paint there. Let's make sure we get paintbrush, fuchsia, and now 
I'm underneath the lines, you see? Like if I come around, the black lines stay. Are you noticing that? Okay. And say you wanted to get rid of that glow on the outside, then you would go into your eraser and just erase it back. And the black has no color over it. It's under the color. See, you can have a little bit of a glow. You can have no glow. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you're up to, what devious nature artwork you're doing. You know me, I come up with all kinds of insanity. So there's a little bit of a glow. So I could put that as gondola glow, just so I know where I'm at. Yeah. And continue to paint that way. With uh, any colors I wanted to introduce, you know. So if I want some of this going on and I don't want that on the outside, I can erase or I can be really careful when I lay it down. And being really careful when you lay it down is also a good idea. I'm just exaggerating so you could see some stuff going on here. We're also keeping that glow. We've got some of those pencil lines showing that shows like a little plasma stuff going on maybe. You know, I haven't made the lines that hang down from the gondola. But now if I come back gently and with my pencil, just ever so lightly, I can put a glow like that, see? Kind of cool. And then softly bring it up into my other color. So this is how to hand paint that in. So you know how to do that. And then I want it darker in certain areas or however I want to affect my color in these ramblings like that if I didn't want it into the fuchsia part see I can take it both out like that even if I want outside the line of this because it's underneath I don't have to worry about erasing over my lines I'm thinking each layer is a piece of glass. So if there's a layer underneath this glass that has the paint on it, I'm basically scraping off the paint when I erase. And you'll get into thinking about all that as time goes on. Right? And so then I'll, I'll do a save. I'm going to call that for the video. That's a lot of video stuff there. All right? So thanks for tuning in. Hope everyone had a good time.